Hello everyone. This time around I want to talk about season two of Mr. Robot. Now this obviously is going to have spoilers so spoiler alert. I've seen in some of the discussions on the interwebs that uh, people think that season two of Mr. Robot fell off the rails, that it doesn't actually make sense, that there's no cohesive storytelling uh, like there was in season one. But I don't actually think that's the case. Uh, one of the things about Mr. Robot is you can't watch it passively. You have to pay attention. Everything is important. Uh, there's background details in scenes uh, that are actually important. If you catch them, you'll find later on that they weren't accidental. Now, there's a lot of stuff in there that's done that uh, to make uh, things like the hacking look, uh, look plausible, at least. And there's a, a bunch of other things in there that are essentially Easter eggs for people that know how the world, that particular part of the world works, the uh, uh, IT hacking world. But there's a lot of background stuff that's really, uh, really uh, important to the overall story. And if you don't catch that stuff, some of that subtle stuff, you'll miss some of the details that actually really tie things together. Now, part of the reason it's, it's hard to uh, watch the show and actually get the full uh, uh, feel for what's going on is the non-conventional cinematography and everything, but that's part of the charm of the show. It doesn't actually use everything exactly like every other show and it doesn't use camera poles to direct your attention, your focus poles and things like that. It, it will set up the camera for a shot and it'll leave it stationary for a shot. Um, it, they'll, they'll set up a long shot on a guy behind a desk with the camera, say, right beside the door to the room. And they'll have a conversation with the guy at the desk to one side of the shot, off in the distance. As opposed, and they'll leave it that way for the entire conversation, wherever the characters happen to be in the room. They'll adjust the focus so that you can actually see the characters, uh, but they don't do the typical, let's do a bunch of rapid cuts back and forth between characters in a scene. They'll set the camera up, and they'll pan it around maybe, but they'll leave it stationary. Or they'll uh, do something dynamic, but th th they won't center the shot, or any number of things like that. Uh, they don't use typical incidental background music. Uh, they don't make the dialogue smooth. They don't make it feel nice and smooth and rehearsed. Uh, they, they let characters stumble around. They leave awkward silences in the dialogue. And that, that goes a long way to setting the mood. And I think it's off-putting to a lot of people. In the first season, a lot of that was hidden by the events that were going on because there was a lot of stuff going on and all, all the while Elliot's giving us a narration and we're seeing what, what's, what's happening so it, it felt like it was moving more but it really wasn't we had a lot less in season one of the more objective reality with other characters as the focus we had some of it, but not much. It was mostly from Elliot's perspective in, in season one as he figured out what was going on, as he encountered characters to figure out what was going on 
we would then start to encounter them in their personal lives separate from Eliot. So eventually, we had more characters slowly elevating to point of view characters until the last few episodes of season one. Season two already has the established set of point of view characters. So we set, so it sets up some conflicts right at the beginning. We find out that Elliot's been essentially missing in action. He's been off in his own corner of the world but, and not taking part in F Society for whatever reason. We find out that Tyrell Wellick's wife doesn't know what's happened to him and is looking for him. And we find out that she's getting evidence that he's probably alive. Uh, we find out that Darlene's been running F Society in Elliot's absence. We find out that someone appears to be picking off members of F Society. And uh, we find out that E Corp is attempting to recover. They've got some grand plan for a bailout or something. And E Coin, which is their alternative to Bitcoin. And that's turning out to be a little bit prescient, actually, because uh, there's headlines uh, showing up recently about uh, big financial uh, operations getting into the blockchain uh, game, uh, which is code for something like Bitcoin. And we have Angela's personal crusade and all of that. Uh, and then you've got the FBI investigation of the hack from season one. So we've got all of these narrative threads going on, and they're all related, but it's not clear immediately how they're related. The FBI ladies conducting her investigation and mumbling along, stumbling along Columbo style from event to event and finding things about here and there and everywhere. Uh, and we see her conducting a fairly competent investigation and apparently getting stonewalled by her own people and possibly getting stonewalled by E Corp and an F Society attempting to stay one step ahead of everything that's going on for them and paranoia taking hold, especially for Darlene, and, but for also the rest of the F Society people. And as a result, the cohesiveness of the whole really starts to fall apart. So the, the season starts out largely focused on Elliot and his internal conflict with Mr. Robot. And we find out that he, see, he seems to be staying with his mother and he doesn't have access to a computer uh, for whatever reason and he's having this battle with Mr. Robot. And he hangs out at this basketball court and at this uh, diner place. And he has his friend that talks to him but he doesn't talk back for the most part. Uh, and this guy with a dog arrives at the uh, basketball court and they uh, and, and uh, recruits Elliot to do a job for him. And, over, I, and I won't bore you with the details. If you want the details, you can actually watch the show. Eventually, Elliot does the job, turns out to be less than above board, and he blows the whistle. Now, it's not, what's not clear is whether he's in jail because he blew the whistle or he was offered the job because he was in jail. There is a bit of a reveal when they revealed the jail bit about mid-season that uh, about the guy with the dog that uh, uh, pretty much, uh, uh, well, it, it calls the timeline into question, but the fact that Elliot did the whistleblowing thing and everything, that we can be reasonably certain happened. At the, around the midpoint, Elliot's let out of jail, and he, he goes uh, on attempting to figure out what's going on. He's come to some sort of a detente with Mr. Robot, and he, he's trying to figure out what's going on. What happened to that missing time? He's trying to, so he's trying to figure out what happened to Tyrell, and Tyrell's wife wants him to find out 
we find what happened to Tyrell. And eventually, Mr. Robot has Elliot convinced that Tyrell's dead. Uh, and there's been a whole bunch of stuff leading up to that that's let's convince him of that, right down to and including the brilliant mindfuck sitcom episode with the cameo to beat all cameos. Um, uh, you know, Alf and a full house lampoon. Uh, and it was brilliantly done. Uh, now, uh, along the way, uh, we find like Elliot's starting to come to terms with what's going on in his head, but he still doesn't know what's going on. He, his memory's still split, I guess. He, he doesn't quite have any idea and it's really messing with him because he knows that he's an unreliable narrator and even in his own head he is unreliable to himself and he's now come to terms with that and he's attempting to be the observer as Mr. Robot goes about doing things and he's uh, he's convinced himself of certain realities and that comes back to bite him in the in the season finale, or at least it seems to. As, uh, while we're led to believe that Tyrell is probably dead, I suspected he wasn't. But the reason that we're led to believe he's alive, the little bits being sent to his wife, turns out to be a red herring. And that's brilliant! Because it turns out that what she's getting that convinces her that Tyrell's alive is all fake. Basically from a stalker. Yet, we get to that final scene with Elliot and Tyrell, and now we're questioning what we know. Is that really Tyrell? Or is he another Elliot hallucination? Well, it's not completely clear yet. They cut the scene just short of, of a proper reveal on that. And we did see earlier on, Elliot put a gun to his own head in his own mind and then wake up. So it's still not clear that even though Tyrell shoots him, that he's actually shot anybody. That he's actually been shot. Tyrell could be a hallucination. Just like Mr. Robot. On the other hand, he could also be real and be the guy that's been pulling the strings for the past however long season two has gone on for. Now, we're led to believe that that's actually the case with the other big reveal at the end of the season where the FBI lady brings Darlene in and shows her the investigation, uh, the investigation board, you know, like they always have in cop shows, the, the, uh, the relationship board and everything. And as they show that to us, and we see all of the bit players that have shown up over the course of the whole season, the whole series, season one and season two, and the various people that have been involved, and how they, and the relationships they have between each other, and it all comes back to two people in the middle, Tyrell and Elliot. And they're both in the middle. What's not clear is what else was on the board. What all did Darlene see in there? And what did the FBI lady explain to her? That will come out at the start of season three. Uh, pretty much, certainly. So... We know, as a result of all of this, there's a big grand plan that Dark Army's ready to implement, that Tyrell is about to pull the trigger on. And we know that FBI knows something. FBI lady, anyway. 
And we know that what we've seen from FBI lady's perspective isn't necessarily accurate either. So she's a little bit of an unreliable narrator. She's been playing a bumbling detective uh, for the whole season, but apparently isn't. She's apparently much better at her job than uh, she lets on. So there's a whole lot that goes on in the in the this season from the death of Gideon Goddard, uh, the uh, uh, guy in charge of All Safe, uh, to uh, the death of one of the uh, F Society people, uh, Darlene uh, murdering somebody around the midpoint in the season, uh, whether it was intentional or not. Uh, she did murder the, the person. Uh, and Darlene's own internal struggle and her slow descent into despair and paranoia and how and everything falling apart around her and within uh, F society falling apart and then you've got Elliot's struggle uh, with Mr. Robot which really consumed the first half of the season but less so second half which focused much more on the other characters and the investigation and we got a lot of character development even for the bit characters the smaller characters and we got a much more development of the people involved in E Corp the people involved in Dark Army uh, the FBI people even got some good development we got some some development of Elliot and the people around him. Uh, we got a little bit more character development for the F Society members. It actually, the story starts to hang to be together better. The problem with season two, though, and it's not really a problem when you take the story as a whole uh, and the fact, and knowing that there's a season three coming for sure is that season two feels like the middle of a trilogy. You have the brilliant opening act, which sets everything up, and the initial major incident happens. But the middle act has to get all of the players from initial positions to final positions to, to build to the dramatic climax. And there was a lot of that going on. Uh, that's what, the whole point of the internal uh, conflict with Elliot. All of the scenes of Elliot uh, with his, in his uh, made-up world in the jail. All of those scenes, they go to character development. And Elliot coming to terms with what's going on. All of the scenes with Angela are Angela coming to terms with the way the world actually works. Uh, losing her illusions that the, the world is fair, that people are honest, that you can trust the authorities. You have the E Corp guy fighting against the very system he's taking advantage of for his own power, because the system is failing him. We have him dealing with the major players, and we find out that he's a bigger player than he seemed at first. Uh, we find out about the FBI lady and, and her investigation. And in light of the final, there is a post credit scene in the, the season finale. In light of that post credit scene, it's pretty clear, I think, how FBI lady found out much of what she knows. Because that final post credit scene shows basically the same made-up environment Elliot was showing us with the two big F Society members that were pretty much in there with Darlene for the whole, whole season talking to 
Elliot's friend from the basketball court and seeing the guy with the dog. So it called into question a great deal of what Darlene knows and what she's actually been up to. We know she hasn't been in jail and we know she doesn't share Elliot's hallucinations. So why did we see it's a different actually it's a it's a different hallucination now or different scene as I recall. It was actually a picnic table outside of some big box store or something like that. But it's the same kind of delusion that Elliot had and the the friend guy showed up. Now either he's been released from jail same reason Elliot was. Or these F Society guys are in the jail. But that doesn't make sense exactly that way because that would mean the jail would have to be co-ed. So maybe it's one of them visiting the other in jail and that's why it's a different setting. It's hard to say. And the question is, why are we seeing it in that perspective if that is the case so that was a pretty solid WTF this was a post credit scene on the season finale and so now I I, I believe I uh, said uh, previously uh, when uh, the news of the renewal and after that brilliant uh, sitcom mindfuck cameo episode um, that uh, I was pretty sure there'd be a payoff at the end of the season for all of this. And there is. And it comes in the final quarter, half or quarter of the final episode of the season. And the motivations of the characters and why they do what they do wouldn't actually make sense without everything that comes before. Now, I'm not going to say that it's absolutely perfect and it couldn't have been told better. Uh, pacing was a little bit slow in a, few <clears throat> in a few spots. And the storytelling was a little bit disjointed in a few spots. But I think that's a storytelling style they were going for. I really do think that was the storytelling style they were going for. And now, after season two, a whole lot of players have been moved around the board and they're now in position to do something big. The culmination of the original plan, which had the F Society hack on E Corp, which turns out to be part of a much bigger plan, apparently created by Elliot. Or maybe Mr. Robot. But they're the same guy. Or are they? What's going on? There was a couple bits where Elliot glitched. And Mr. Robot actually ended up stepping in so that people wouldn't be go, what? So there's something wrong in Elliot's head and it's getting worse. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Like what's causing these glitches? Like what's actually going on? What's really going on in this whole thing? I've got a pretty good idea that whatever they reveal at the end of season three or four, or five or six or seven, whatever is going to be the end of the series, assuming they know they've got a series finale coming, it's going to be the biggest surprise ass pull reveal ever. But I suspect if you look back, it'll probably fit. Maybe not. Maybe they, they'll actually deal with some stuff in season three and move on. Hard to say. There's certainly a lot of potential, story potential for the future 
with Elliot's mental issues, obvious mental issues, with uh, Darlene's clear descent into paranoia and uh, chaos, FBI ladies' uh, stuff going on, and there's a big untapped story potential with Angela. So we'll see what actually happens. Uh, I'm actually looking forward to season three. I'm really glad it got a season three, uh, even though the ratings of season two are actually lower than they were for season one. Now, I suspect the big reason for that is season one aired in the spring, season two aired in the summer, and went up against the Olympics. So that will have caused the ratings to be lower. Both of them airing in the summer as opposed to the spring and the uh, going up against the Olympics for the second half of the season is certainly not helping anything. So there's a good chance, I think, that the season three ratings will be better. I'm hoping that they don't actually tank worse for season three. It'll depend, it'll, it'll depend if it's a strong opener or not. Uh, when it comes around, but if things things tank, they might still cancel season four, which has been ordered, I believe. So it's uh, it's hard to say, uh, but hopefully, uh, hopefully the we got a good payoff for season two, but the full payoff hasn't happened like it did in season one. Like season one, things were left open, uh, like yeah, things. It was oh wow the hack pull went off and everything's gone to uh, gone to hell and and so on. Season two actually explored that that gone to hell thing uh, quite a bit, but it didn't actually finish off what's going on. So that big plan we're gonna end up that's gonna be what season three is about. What was the plan? What was the consequence of that? And what's up with Elliot? What's up with Darlene? What's up with FBI lady? So we'll, we'll see what, what happens. And I have high hopes that season three will really move things along. Uh, they've set up quite a lot. Uh, it maybe went a little bit slower than people might have liked. But the, the psycho thriller aspect of it, I think, demanded that. There was a lot of careful, careful staging of the a lot of these scenes that people didn't like. Uh, the staging of the scenes was important. Like, there were scenes that just didn't seem to make any sense. It didn't seem to have any point. There was one scene where Angela is invited to a meeting. The meeting is catered and, and, you know, whatever's going on. And Angela's told, don't say anything. You're just there to observe. And then she insists on making, uh, saying said that she's got some idea that says, you know, we should do this and this is why. And everybody gets up silently leaves and the department head guy says enjoy lunch and leaves that scene looks totally pointless like why did they even need it but it does have a point i won't say what it is uh, not because i don't have any idea what it is but because it requires careful analysis of the overall story arc that Angela's on and I don't want to go into that detail here but it's uh, it's not a pointless scene not at all there it, it it's actually critical to Angela's story arc there are there's all those scenes where Elliot's buddy is 
talking to him pretty much nonstop, and Elliot's pretty much not listening. Uh, those have a point. They're, they're, they're all relevant to Elliot's ongoing uh, mental uh, struggle, uh, I guess. There's a whole lot of these scenes that don't seem to have any point. Sometimes the point is the background action, like what's showing, playing on the TV, uh, things like that. You know, and they did a great job of some of that background stuff, right, right down to uh, creating a presidential speech using uh, excerpts from actual speeches that Obama gave to make it fit into the universe so that he's, he's giving a speech about Tyrell Wellick. They did a brilliant job of that. And, and they put a lot of effort into those backgrounds. They're important. They're, they're part of the story. And I think anyone who watches the show and doesn't pay attention to those backgrounds is doing the, the, the showmakers, the, the producers, a disservice. So if you are going to watch Mr. Robot or you have watched it but you didn't really quite get it, Watch it again, knowing what's to come, and look for the details. And I think you'll be surprised uh, that there's a lot of detail in there that uh, you probably missed the first time that makes the story so much more uh, cohesive. Uh, it gives it so much more depth. Anyway... Uh, I think that's probably enough uh, rambling on about Mr. Robot. Uh, as I said, uh, it does have its issues. Uh, in some some cases, pacing's a little bit off. Uh, some cases, uh, it doesn't really seem like the uh, execution of what they they did quite worked uh, in the context, but. Uh, it uh, it may well be that it'll make sense in the context of season three. Uh, I'm giving them a benefit of the doubt uh, that uh, you know anything that doesn't quite fit is probably there because it's necessary for future storytelling. That uh, I'm going to uh, give them credit for having at least the outlines of a plan for going forward. Uh, whether they do or not, uh, it's hard to say. Uh, most of the time, they'll have a good plan for the first season, maybe a notion of the second and third. So we'll see if it hangs together. I think it will come season three. Uh, so here's looking forward to season three of Mr. Robot. When it comes, I think next summer probably, and I guess that's all on it for, for now. Um, if you want to be notified of future videos, make sure to subscribe. And if you've watched this far, thanks for watching.